Grouping is a good way to make your data more manageable. You can use it to show or hide certain parts of your worksheet, so you can focus on the information you need. You can even add subtotals to summarize or outline your data. In this example, I have a list of t-shirt orders, but I really don't need to see the people's names and payment information right now. So with these three columns selected, I'm going to go to the Data tab and then click the Group command. Now we can show or hide this group using the button that's attached to this bracket here. Click the minus sign to hide or collapse the data, and the plus sign to show it again. To ungroup any data, make sure it's selected, then click the Ungroup command, and you're all set. The subtotal command is similar to groups. You can use it to create groups automatically and also add functions like sum, count, and average to help you summarize your data. In this example, I'd like to tally up the number of orders for each t shirt size, including small, medium, large, and extra large. Before we can add a subtotal, our data has to be sorted by the column we plan to summarize, so I've already taken care of that here. As you can see, the t-shirts have been put into a custom sort order, going from smallest to largest. All we have to do now is click the subtotal command, and a dialog box will appear. Here we'll select the column that's going to be the basis for the subtotal. In this case, that's t-shirt size. Next, we'll pick the function that we're going to be using. Now there are several common functions to choose from, like sum, average, and product. But we're going to use count, which will just count the number of cells that contain each size. If you had numerical data, you could choose sum instead, and it would actually add the values from each of those cells to create a subtotal. Finally, check the column where you want the subtotal to appear, then click OK. Now, a couple of things have happened here. Each t shirt size is now in its own group, indicated by the brackets here on the left and all those groups are inside a larger group. This is also called an outline in Excel. The other thing that's happened is that each group has a subtotal beneath it. So we can see the number of shirts that have been ordered in each size, and at the very bottom, we can also see a grand total. To make the worksheet easier to read, we can show or hide the groups like we did before, but when you have groups inside of groups, like we do in this example, sometimes it's easier just to view them by level. Just look for the buttons to the left of your worksheet. The highest level, which is three in this case, will show all of your data. Level two will hide the details of each size, leaving just the individual subtotals. Finally, level one will hide everything, so we can only see the grand total. Let's click three to show the entire worksheet again. Okay, there's one more thing we'd like to point out. When you use subtotals, you'll notice these extra rows have been inserted in the spreadsheet. And while they're very useful for viewing our subtotal information, if you need to change the formatting or arrangement of your spreadsheet, you might find that these subtotal rows just get in the way. In a case like this, it's best to remove subtotals from your spreadsheet before you make any other big changes. To remove subtotals from your worksheet, all you have to do is click the subtotal command, then click the button that says Remove All. Grouping and subtotaling can make your worksheet less cluttered, more organized, and easier to view, so keep these features in mind the next time you need help summarizing your data.